right, so for those of you who are watching the video on the Blue Golf, which is still in progress, um, I said I might give you a sneak peek at the next project, um, or the project that I'm doing after the golfs, and I think I maybe said it was something quite different. Um, so I'm going to let you have a look at this, and also this will be the first part of the series on the armoured camper van. So, um, a bit random, but I'll, uh, I'll let you have a look and see what we're working with. So here we go, this is it. It is officially a 100 CAV, which is a composite armoured vehicle. Um, it's more affectionately known as a Snatch 2A. Um, I tend to call it the Snatch because it leads up, uh, lines up lots of jokes when you're talking to people about it, um, for them and for me. Um, and basically it was last deployed in Afghanistan. It was first made for uh, Northern Ireland and originally it was a four litre V8. In 2005, the body was lifted off the chassis and rolled under it was a brand new rest of the world chassis with the 300 TDI engine, which is the preference obviously of the armed forces because they're a lot easier to work on um, and there's less things that can go wrong in terms of electrics so even when the TD5 came out the armed forces did continue to opt for the 300 TDI engine which Land Rover specially produced for them um, until I, th I can't remember what year it was but they did take a really small number of TD5s I can't remember how much it, how many it was and um, which were then used by the Royal Marines so there's a little bit of um, history for you so you can see that the the person I bought it from has done a really good job of putting a single bed in it. He, you know, he built that himself um, and he's done a really good job of it. He's even put a bit of camouflage underneath it in keeping with the vehicle. Um, the only thing is that it is quite heavy. Um, and to be honest, um, I'd probably like to somehow try and get something a bit bigger and um, maybe a double or a three-quarter double i um, also known as a queen size um so what i'm going to be doing today um technically this is a day off but i did actually take the the vehicle away uh overnight and, and camped out in, in it for the first time which was interesting but you know i'll just um give you a quick look around it first um and so it, it's pretty much the way it came back from Afghanistan. Um, so you can see it's got some, some battle wounds. Yeah, there's the, the grate for the front window that pulls up from inside. Uh, the, the whole thing's bulletproof. The gas, glass is, is bulletproof. It's, um, it's an inch thick. Um, and it's got the uh, aircon unit that needs a little bit of attention because obviously in Afghanistan, uh, in a vehicle that gets very hot on its own without being in the desert, um, that's kind of a necessity. So um, let's, um, I suppose I better show you the sunroof, AKA where they used to shoot from. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's where uh, the soldiers used to stand out of and shoot from. Um, I will uh, I'll give you a picture of it. I'll leave that open, actually. It's better light. Um, yeah, well, I'll flash up a picture of it in deployment on deployment in Afghanistan, so you can see that as well. Uh, but let me just switch back over to the other camera. Yeah, uh, so um, I did go and uh, stay away in it on Friday night. So, yeah, Friday night. Um, went up to meet with one of my friends in Fife for dinner, and then I took up to... The northeast to near Forfar, where I lived for about 14 years and went to school. Um, and technically, it's not my hometown, but it kind of feels like it is because I never really lived in my hometown. But um, anyway, um, so what, yeah, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take out the all of the seats in the back because I'm not going to be using them. And I'm going to leave the bed in just now, but I'm going to take some measurements because... I want to figure out how I'm going to go about either getting a something more like a double or a three-quarter double in it, um, 
obviously it's not wide enough for a standard one of either um, but I'd like to come up with something that the two people can sleep in um, and uh, I don't generally like, like sleep lying straight out I kind of tend to sleep in more of a fetal position um, or um, you know kind of like at an angle so basically just trying to figure out something that would work for me and um, potentially allow a couple of people to sleep in it um, so that's that's what I'm gonna do uh, and also there's uh, there, there's a solenoid on on the back door where is it I, I can't I'm, I'm struggling to find it um, oh there <laughs> Um, yeah, there's a solenoid that operates the the handle for the back door, um, and and that's all well and good. Uh, but also there are uh, deadlocks on the inside of the front doors, and um, my my first camping trip didn't really go that smoothly because um, I deadlocked the driver and passenger door from inside. Which I probably didn't really need to do because I wasn't in a dodgy place or anything, but it just seemed like, hey, there's locks there, I might as well put them on. So I did that, and then my wee mini Dashian decided at five in the morning that she wanted to have a really big drink, um, and you know what comes after a really big drink. Uh, so I thought, yeah, I better, I better get up and let her out. So I just kind of chucked on some clothes, made sure I had the car keys, um, or the vehicle keys, and then let her out and my other dog was trying to jump out or one of my other dogs was trying to jump out and I was quite close to a main road so I just kind of shut the door because I knew they wouldn't need out um, and then um, she went for a pee and I went for a pee and then uh, I went to get back in and realised I couldn't <laughs> because there's no lock on the back door there is no key slot on the back door and I deadlocked the driver and passenger doors. So there I was stuck outside at five in the morning with my phone locked in and no way of getting into it. And one of the attractions for getting this vehicle uh, for me was that it would be very difficult to break into, whereas a traditional sort of style motorhome or camper van really isn't. And um, I will be leaving my dogs in it for short periods of time with air conditioning on obviously um to make sure that it's it's a perfect temperature for them um so yeah it's very difficult to break into <laughs> um i managed to some some really nice guy called ross uh who works for saddlers bakers and lives in montrose shout out to ross um, he was kind enough to stop and give me a lift into Forfer to get some a socket set because I reckoned I could maybe undo some of the bolts from the outside to somehow get in. Uh, unfortunately, when that didn't work because all the bolts just have nuts on the inside, there's no captive nuts, which is obviously designed so you can't just undo the bolts to get into it. Uh, he gave me a lift out to my friend's house and my friend kindly gave me a shot of um, all the tools he has and a car to get back to it. So, uh, and then also a shout out to the people at the sailing club, which is just outside Forfar at the Montrose Road. Um, not sure what it's called, but um, they were they were really nice to me, and they let me use their toilet, and um, they uh, they empathised with the fact that I was stuck, and uh, did try to call a couple of people who were maybe able to help. Unfortunately, they couldn't um, because there's not really a go-to person for breaking into an armoured Land Rover. Um, but what they did do is gave me a crowbar. So what I ended up doing was loosening the hinges as much as I could, which wasn't very much, uh, and then getting the crowbar under the and uh, behind the bottom of the door. Uh, and I did manage to lever it enough to make the deadlock pop off. So I don't mind telling you that because I'm going to weld the hinges so that somebody else can't do that. Um, but literally, I mean, I was up on the roof. I was underneath trying to find the wire that operates the solenoid so I could hot wire it. Um, they're not daft, that runs inside the vehicle. <laughs> goes up there, down there, and then along under the floor. So uh, they did a really good job of making this extremely difficult to break into. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld the hinges so that you can't do that. 
Um, but before I do that, I'm going to make sure that there's uh, a way of getting into it. And uh, what I've done is, um, I'll show you the, um, there's just this switch here just now, um, because, which I just put on temporarily, because the guy that I bought it off was just uh, basically hot wiring wires together to get it to open. Um, so what I've done, oops, sorry, it's a bit loud. Uh, what I've done is I've bought this remote switch. Yeah, so we have the remote switch here and uh, the key fobs. Uh, so basically what that will allow me to do is to um, pop open uh, the back door. Um, and, and that'll be great because it is a little bit fiddly just now. You have to unlock the driver's door or the passenger door, flick the switch and then go around and open it, then flick, flick the switch back again, um, which is obviously not very convenient. So it'll be a lot easier just to press the the fob button and um, when you're at the back door and it'll pop open um, and uh, then you can just uh, put whatever in it so uh, that'll be um, that'll be a lot better so I'm gonna fire that in today because I don't want to be caught in that situation again and uh, I'm never ever ever <laughs> gonna use the deadlocks again on the front door unless I'm like actually sitting um, you know in a war zone or something or maybe not a war zone but in a country where there are people running around with guns and things um, and they're trying to get in the vehicle then I, then I would probably deadlock it but um, apart from that uh, if, I'm, if I'm camping in Scotland <laughs> I'm definitely not going to use the deadlocks again so between not using the deadlocks again and having a remote control for the rear door I shouldn't get locked out of it again and if I do then I'm really 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 stupid um, because it's so hard to break into I mean obviously the windows are an inch thick bulletproof glass so good luck smashing one of them um yeah it, it would it would be really really well it is really really hard <laughs> to break into it took me five hours um and i guess i should be glad that i uh, i managed to get into it at all and um, because land rover and mod um i've gone to a lot of time um making sure that it's extremely difficult to break into which is great so um you know looking on the bright side it wasn't raining uh, it wasn't freezing cold and i wasn't in the middle of a desert somewhere it was just um about a five ten minute drive from from one of my best friend's houses so uh, and it was him i was supposed to be seeing the next morning anyway so uh i, I took it pretty well to be honest i don't tend to sweat the small stuff um so you know if you just uh, accept that at some point in your life you're probably going to get locked out of a car and it's going to be annoying but um you know there's no point in getting upset about it so um the last time it happened was when i was 18 and with my escort cabriolet and i uh, put the key down in the boot and shut the boot without thinking um and um, had to call the aa to come and help and um you can't you can't just put the back seat down in the convertible because it doesn't go down to get into the boot so there's no easy way into the boot so he but he managed to unbolt panels from here and there and eventually we got into it so um i was really thankful for that as well um so anyway i'll stop waffling um i just thought i better do a wee video to introduce this ow sorry my my torn knees quite sore uh, which i'm getting surgery on this week so hopefully that goes well and i'm not out of um out of commission for too long and um, because uh, unfortunately the body shop still haven't painted the black golf that's now been there for about two and a half months so i think i'm gonna need to do that as well um so yeah i should really stop talking and measure out what i need to measure and take these seats out and then just order some bits and pieces so that i can at least do maybe like phase one of kitting this thing out uh, so I can use it comfortably or more comfortably at the weekends um, in Scotland and um, obviously there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to do to it to make it self-sufficient off the grid um, which I'll talk about in another video don't want to give it all away now and also I don't know everything that I'm going to do yet um, but yeah it'd be good to have a level floor have some storage space in the back the level floor particularly for the dogs 
um, have some storage space in the back and potentially have a bigger sleeping space um, because um, well even if it's just my little mini Dashin that's sleeping in the bed with me which she always does she can take up quite a lot of space and uh, who knows um, might want to have someone else there as well <laughs> all right I'm gonna go just now and uh, time lapse this So just to confuse you even more, that part of the footage was shot in July um, and um, I did try to get the seats out but I kind of started to feel pretty unwell while I was doing it um, <clears throat> and uh, so I basically stopped and then the next day I had a, a Covid test for you know in advance of my operation and I tested positive so I managed to avoid catching it for the whole of the pandemic up until the week I was meant to be getting surgery. <laughs> so that wasn't the best luck, but never mind. Um, I got it done three months later in September. So I didn't get the seats out before I moved um, all my tools and stuff up to the unit. So what I did do was, um, I think maybe after like a week or two of sleeping in it and not being very comfortable, I decided to spend a bit of time just um, getting a double bed in it basically um i was trying to avoid doing too much really to the snatch just now because i'm trying to focus on the golfs but it was definitely worth the effort so i did take some pictures of it so i'll show you them as well <laughs> that first look at the bulletproof camper and um, there'll be an awful lot more videos coming on that there's lots of work to do lots of things I want to do to it um, but I need to um, fire through these golfs first or at least get a couple of them done and um, see see whether we want to do more to the to the Land Rover before then or not but we'll play it by ear but anyway um, thanks for watching if you like this video hit thumbs up hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one Oh, 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 oh,